Hey everyone, this is your Sally Coach again, and today we'll be doing a practice problem for a normal aristocrat with a hint, and be going over some strategies that I can use for other aristocrats you see in the future. So let's get started. This one says, a quote by Samuel Taylor Coleridge has been encoded into the aristocrat cipher for you to decode. You are told that one of the words is you, and that the does not appear in the text. So first we look at our frequencies, we see that B, E, and W are our top three with high frequencies. So this could be our E, maybe T, maybe S, and um, we also see that we have a conjunction right here, apostrophe N. This one could be used for like possession, like apostrophe S or maybe apostrophe T. So we may need to look for that. Um, we also have this really big word right here, and we also have a really big word right here. Now these two are the same exact word, except this one has a three-letter ending. And that three-letter ending could be I-N-G, or it could be, like, I-L-Y. So we could just say that Q is I. If we wanted to, we could put that out. But just to confirm this, we also have a single letter I right here. And we know that the only single letters we can have in the English alphabet is either A or I. And since we know it can't be I, we choose A. So we're going to go I to A, and we can start filling that in. We also have an I over here. And last I. Since we know that's an I, we can also fill in this Q as um, an I. So now we're going to fill in the Q's as I, Q over here, Q over here, Q, Q, and our last Q right here. Alright, so after finishing this part, we can also see that this word right here, has similar letters to our other word after our conjunction, QXBSEI, QXBSEIB. So we can try figuring out what this word is in the end, maybe try getting some new letters and then figuring this one out. But at the moment, we can try using our hint right here. We are told that one of the words is you and that the does not appear in the text. So we only have three, I mean, we only have two three-letter words here, VSP and then AQN. So we know that this one can't be U because we have an I right here. So we're going to fill in VSP as our U. O and U. We're going to fill in our Vs as Y. We have S as O. What else do we have? And then we have P going to U. All right, so now that we have this, we can try figuring out some other words. Now we have this two letter word right here. This could be on or of or of and we don't really want to say that right now in case we can't find anything else we could say it and um i'd say this is our best bet to figure out if one of the words are of or uh on so we can try using other letters like the other t's to figure out if it's going to be of or n and the frequency of t t is really short and N, we know that that's going to be some high frequency letter, especially when there's really big words such as this and this one right here. So we can just try and say that T corresponds to F. So after that, we're going to do right here. And having 
T as F really helps us helps us out right here because oh we also have the P corresponding to the U and now we can see that this has to be some sort of your your something we don't know that at the moment but we know this is going to be your so we have E going to R we can start filling that in E to R E to R I think this is our last. No, we have one more after this. And E to R. So at the moment, we could just put this as I and G if we wanted to. Because X, it does have a 3 frequency. And if we see where the other X's lie, this would be our G. So. We would have an X right here, and we would also have an X right here. Having a word start out with I, Y just does not make sense, right? So we're going to put it as I and G, that um, X corresponding to G. So we're going to have G right here, G right here, and we're also going to have B going to N. So we have this, B to N. B to N, B to N, B to N, And this is our last B right here. So now we have this word ignore it. Now this one has to be a T due to the rest of the words. So we have the word ignorant right here. So now we have H corresponding to T. We're going to start filling that in. H to T, H to T. And we can start seeing our important words coming together like until you know so this one it's really useful to try getting some of the really big words or having these endings or contractions i mean conjunctions to figure out where the other letters land so we have our last uh, no we don't have our last h this is h to t h to t right here um h to t and now we're starting to get this word right here, the big one. This one has to be understanding. It's pretty hard to figure out. It takes a lot of important vowels and letters from other words. But once you get close to half of it, it's pretty easy to see that this is going to be understanding, especially with a lot of practice in aristocrats. So now that we have understanding over here, we also have it up here as our third word, understanding. Sorry about that. A little bad handwriting. Understand. So now we can start filling out all of our letters, and we see that until lands over here, until you understand a blank's ignorance. So based on this other word right here, we can start filling it in. Ignorance is also a form of the word ignorance. Ignorance. We have W as our E, a pretty high frequency letter, so we can also start putting that out. And since we also have the two conjunctions right here, we said it could either be apostrophe T or apostrophe S, maybe apostrophe M. But right here, we can see that it uses the word U trying to say that a possession. So this one has to be apostrophe S. Now, well, we still don't know what this one is, but we do know E does go to um, R. And then we have this word right here. We can start filling in our letters again.
yourself of give this and at this point we need to figure out some of our low frequency letters like a right here our y has only one our j is also one w we have an e right here now our n is s our g is only singular so until you understand a writer's ignorance you remember about the different letters that can go right before an R. It could have been C, a writer, but a writer makes more sense. So we're going to go with writer's ignorance. Um, then we also have yourself ignorant of his understanding. This is, it can't be any other word since it is talking about the person in general until you so since it is talking about that, you has to go back to the person that we are talking about. So it's going to be his understanding. Usually aristocrats have an either male sense of point of view based on the speaker as well. We can see that the word is Samuel. So we know that his needs to be here in any case. It's because it's a man speaking, so you would think that they would use the word his. Especially since we start the um, quote off with until you. And then we have the possession. And these are our two mistakes. In case we don't know what the word is, I always leave it. I always leave the two mistakes because we can tell that all these other words all fit together nicely. So until you understand a writer's ignorance, blank, yourself ignorant of his understanding. So that's the practice problem for today. Thank you for listening and remember to subscribe.